from Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center, where tonight the fifth ranked University of Hawaii men's volleyball team hopes it's truly a good Friday as they play host to the 20th ranked Gauchos of UC Santa Barbara. And this is Game On, presented by Bank of Hawaii for Rainbow Warrior Volleyball. Hi everybody, hope you're having a great Aloha Friday. Scott Robbs, James Anastasiadis, and Ryan Kalei Suji Hawaii back at it after last weekend splitting a pair of matches with the Matadors of CESA. Let's take a look at the scores from a week ago. On Friday night, Hawaii survived. They knocked off uh, the Matadors in four, though it was not easy. Alakai Todd led the way for UH. And then on Saturday night, the Matadors with the upset of Hawaii taking down the Warriors in four, uh, Luis Sakanoko led the way for Hawaii. And here are some more thoughts on last week's matches. I think we just learned more about ourselves and and Pop C Sunday played very, very well. I think it's more of a good test for us to see like when adversity, when we face adversity and all that and what we can do. And we definitely could do a lot there in that sense. And I hope, I hope that comes up in the future where we can approach you a lot there. I think we found out kind of what works and what doesn't because that's what we're trying to do. Different lineups and different connections with different people so we're trying to figure that out see what's our best option so I think we're starting to learn what's kind of what's working and what's not working with us girls. Getting Louis continuing to kind of log hours and get on the court that was certainly it was uh, one of the brightest things out of the whole weekend and, and just going forward you know he he continues to get really better on a daily basis, and uh, it's exciting to see. Only a couple of matches in conference play, but another big surprise. Look at that, folks. CSUN, after knocking off Hawaii the last Saturday here at home tonight, they beat UC Irvine in a four, and there you see Long Beach State taking care of business in three over UC San Diego. So the standings as of right now in the Big West alone unbeaten is Long Beach State. You see on the far right, the NCAA RPI at number three is Long Beach State, but Hawaii currently sitting in fifth place in the league at one and three with an RPI of number six. Of course, the RPI is one of the metrics the NCAA uses to pick their at-large as we talked to Charlie about the impact of the RPI. The RPI would be an admission that you're looking at and some sort of a large bid. Uh, at the end of it, I know that when you win, it's really good. When you're bad, it's not. And so uh, there will be uh, a match to qualify for the NC2A tournament in here in the Stan Sheriff Center. Uh, we have to be in it. We have to win it. Well, let's look at the most recent coaches poll came out on Monday, Long Beach State, the number one team in the country, followed by UCLA and then UC Irvine, also out of the Big West. There you see Hawaii, they dropped from two to five after that loss last Saturday to CESA, and there you see the bottom five of the top 10. The other rankings include the other teams in the Big West Conference, CESA at UC San Diego, you see there as well as tonight's opponent, UC San Diego, at number 20 in the top 20 poll. And so, guys, let's take uh, let's go back to last week a bit. What did you guys learn, or what did you take away from last weekend's matches, Ryan? Well, I think it was a glaringly obvious to just how much the scene miss, miss, uh, misses Spiros Hakas and the presence that he brought to this court. I think at times there were a lot of frustration by the players and coaches. Uh, we saw that as evident in some of the mental breakdowns during that match, but I think what is also very evident is the passing at times really struggled for Hawaii, and one of the things that they really had to shore up this week, hopefully in the practice gym, was the passing and the ability to run a much more consistent offense, because Hawaii can no longer win a high ball out of system battle anymore. For me, it was very evident that the chemistry needs to rebuild again. It was almost like watching this Hawaii team in the beginning of the season where they had a couple new players and they needed to learn how to work together. They got to a very good point, and then unfortunately what happened to Spiros, we have to sub him back in. They need to find their groove with whether it's Luis Sakanoko or Keone Tim stepping into that position. The passing rotation, they need to find their groove. The passers need to get a little bit more comfortable with each other and build that chemistry back up. I think we all recognize that with the loss of Spiros, it's going to be a tough road for Hawaii to win the Big West Conference Tournament. So they may have to rely on getting in as an at-large. Does a number six RPI where they sit right now 
Is that good enough to get in? No, I don't think it is. I just think Whitney, look at the resumes of other teams around the country. Uh, how many good teams are likely not going to qualify with the automatic bid? Uh, it's going to come down to some of these teams, maybe like a Grand Canyon uh, or, or a Stanford or some of these other teams that are challenging. Who knows? Maybe UCLA may be on the bubble. I mean, it's just such a competitive year that it's, there's going to be a lot of teams knocking on the door to get in. And you heard from Charlie Wade. The only way that they can guarantee themselves in is if they win the Big West tournament that's going to be here in Hawaii. Yeah, for me, take away the RPI. I don't think anyone can answer the question of who's going to win the Big West tournament. We've seen so many upsets throughout the half, first half of the Big West season. Tonight, CSUN taking down Irvine, who took Hawaii with Spiros to five, beat Hawaii without Spiros last week in four. It's a huge question mark whether who's going to win the Big West. And a lot of the Big West teams have played in Hawaii this year. Irvine was here in the preseason. CSUN played here. We have Santa Barbara. The only two teams that won is Long Beach State and San Diego. Long Beach State very comfortable in this gym. San Diego not as much. It's going to be an interesting Big West tournament. I couldn't answer who's going to win. So. No, yeah, that, that's it's going to be very important who does win. Yeah, that's going to be in a couple of weeks right here. It should be a lot of fun. But up first for Hawaii tonight, the first of two against UC Santa Barbara. Now we throw it over to the gentleman that will be calling the action, the Nolan Ryan lookalike, Kanoa, <laughs> along with C-Mac, guys. Uh, is your arm as sore as mine here today? I can't yeah. lift it up any higher than this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, next to C-Mac, Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy. And uh, C-Mac, obviously, so much has been said about the vacancy that has been left uh, by the injury to Spiros Hawkins, but it's interesting because Charlie Wade has talked about we don't really want to refer to uh, this time of the season as sort of being post Spiros Hawkins or uh, the aftermath of the Spiros injury as you take a look at him there in the tunnel. He says, you know what? It happened right before conference play, so we are talking about this stretch as conference volleyball. Uh, what do you think about that philosophy? Yeah, he was pretty adamant about it, but when you hear the Hear, hear the players talk about it. Uh, they very definitely miss their, their captain, their spiritual leader, uh, their kill leader. Uh, and you just can't. It's like the 800-pound elephant in the room. You can't, you can't just ignore it. It's there, and they got to deal with it. I think they're doing the best they can with it. Charlie's right as far as conference, non-conference goes. That's an easy way to, to, to uh, really tell the players, you know what, let's just get on. We're going to move on. This is what Spiros would want. Just conference play, play the best you can now and get ready for our tournament here in the Statue of Center. Well, you lose a veteran presence, veteran voice like Spiros Hakas. Uh, you have to rely on some of the other veterans on the squad. And you have pin hitters like Chaz Galloway and Alaka Itad who have been in this program for a long time. Uh, what do you think about their role here and now assuming some of that leadership and some of that veteran presence? Great examples. Both of them are definitely stepping up. Another one is stepping up is G. Voss, but there you see Alakai Todd. And he's been here six years. He's worked so hard to get, have his chance, have his moment. And now not only is he having his moment offensively, he's blocking pretty well, and he's got to step up leadership-wise now. Oh, by the way, Alakai means leader in Hawaiian, yeah, yeah. so he's filling that void. Uh, and Chaz doing the same thing. I think Chaz, normally quiet, laid back, um, just kind of just quietly does his job. Yeoman, kind of blue collar kind of a worker. But now he knows he's got to step up as well, and he has been. Uh, you have uh, UCSB on the other side. They're 0-5 in the Big West Conference, but I think it's pretty well established there are no off nights in this league because even with UCSB, a very young version of the Gauchos here this season, they still feature one of the most prolific opposites in the game in Jess Bianchi, who's averaging over four and a half kills per set. Number two in the NCAA. Those are big numbers. There he is right there. He's got that lefty swing Rick, that uh, Rick McLaughlin says, you know, it's kind of hard to read. It's kind of goofy. It's kind of all over the pl place, and that's why he gets so many kills. A lot like Claire Heno from Irvine. The guy who's going to be setting him for some of those swings. Jack Walmer, of course, former Rainbow Warrior, now in his second year with UCSB. And according to head coach Rick McLaughlin, he has taken a significant step here in this, his junior campaign. Well, he redshirted his first year here in Hawaii, and his second year as a serving specialist. He did a great job of it. In fact, served match point against Long Beach in the NC2A championships. So he knows what tough moments are like, and uh, he definitely has improved a lot, according to Coach Rick. So here we go, Gauchos Rainbow Warriors. We will have first serve for you in just a little bit, but let's send it back over to the corner crew.
All right, thanks a lot, guys. We're going to take a break right now, but when we come back, we're going to hear some words from Spiros Hawkins and the rest of the Rainbow Warriors. Welcome back to Manoa. Big matchup here tonight. Number five, Hawaii, and number 20, UC Santa Barbara. Earlier, we caught up with Spiros Hawkins, who talked a bit about the injury and his new role with the team. I had a feeling, um, not instantly, but you know, as I walked away, I got carried away. Um, I had a feeling that you know it was something more severe than I've had before, other injuries. Um, but then, you know, I tried not to panic. You know, in these moments, you just gotta stay calm. Um, I felt safe in the environment, like the stand. You know, with my teammates being there, supporting me, carrying me out of the court. The people respected me the way they did. So that was something that you know I embraced. Stuff, stuff like that happens in sports, uh, you know, you can't control that always. Um, so I accepted it pretty quick. I just told the boys to move on. Uh, whatever happened, happened. We just got to leave it behind and then we just got to keep improving and focusing on the goals that we have as a team. My role kind of transformed more of a sideline kind of supporter and leader. Um, and even off the court, you know, whenever someone has a question or the team has a question and they want to talk to me, I'm there always for them. You know, I don't get to do much during my day. I'm mostly in bed. Uh, so whenever the boys just hit me up to talk and you know reach out, I'm there for them to just tell them whenever, whatever they need, whatever they want to talk about. Well, here are the three guys vying for the two spots. Of course, you look at Chaz Galloway. He's the longtime veteran, the steady guy out there on the floor for the University of Hawaii. Louis Sakanoko, the freshman out of France who couldn't wow you at times. And of course, Keone Thim, who is known really for his serving specialist, but also can do pretty well on the outside. So these three guys are going to have to try to find a way to fill that void on the outside. When one man goes down, the next one should be there to replace him no matter what. So I think that, you know, the program that we play at cultivates this culture, you know, that everyone is ready to step up and give you a time. He's still our captain, despite where he's on or off the court. We all have to contribute, have to put a little more now that our, that our captain's off the court. But, but yeah, I mean, it's just a work in progress. And it's more like we have to be more comfortable with each other and not just relying on one player. At the end of the day, we're not Spiros and we don't have him, so we gotta find our own strengths and basically create the new team culture and bonding we have without him. You know, we can't really try and fill his shoes, we just gotta kinda walk our own path and keep our strengths our strengths, basically. I'm just trying to focus on what I can control, you know, lineups and, and whatever they decide uh, to do is kind of out of my control, so I'm just trying to have fun at this point with my guys and just perform to the best of my abilities when I do go in or if the team needs me. That's kind of my goal right now. And they all have a little something different they could bring and you could you can make an argument for each of them and that's, you know, one of the beauties of having a lot of talented players that they all can contribute, um, each of them in kind of their own way and, um, you know, that uh, just makes us a better team. They be fighting, you know, the results may not come all the time, but as long as you fight and you give it our all, you give it your all out in the court, it's just whatever you can do. Time now to weigh in. It is sponsored by Heineken. And first thing I have to say is, what an impressive guy Spiros Hawkins is. I mean, what a great attitude. Coming through with an injury, having an injury like that and his response, you don't hear a lot of college athletes reflect on it so, so well. Yeah, and you got to think it is a devastating injury, of course. And I think there, of course, as we see him here, uh, this will be the first weekend that he is back here in the arena. Uh, look for him to get a, a really welcome reception here. Uh, but just goes to show just the quality of a player in person that he is and the leadership skills that he brought that a lot of this team is still looking how to navigate through. Okay, we saw the three outside hitters right now. If you're Coach Wade, which two do you roll with? I would stick with my decision that I made last week, which was Louis Sakonoko and Chaz Galloway. Louis' resume is just a little bit bigger than Keone Dims. He's played with the French U19 national team. He's played against some big clubs in France, and he grew up in a country that has one of the best leagues in the world. His resume is very big, and what I like about Louis is he talked about it last week. He knows that he has very big highs and very big lows. He just needs to steady out, and I think with time he's very capable of doing that. And then Chaz Galloway, three-year national 
national championship starter. You can't take away what he's managed to accomplish with this team, and I know that he's going to step it up. Yeah, I agree, and I think that Chaz Galloway is going to be one of those players that will continue to be relied on more and more as we move through the season. We saw him have a great first night last, uh, last weekend. I think one of the things is if he can continue to sustain a relatively high hitting percentage throughout the match and help provide Hawaii kills in some clutch situations. All right, should be a fun one here tonight at the arena. It's Hawaii. UCSB will break down the matchup when we come back. Back inside Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center, a battle of top 20 ranked teams, number five Hawaii and number 20 UC Santa Barbara. Well, the Gauchos come in seven and 14 on the year, but they are very battle tested. Look at the number of nationally ranked opponents they have played this year. Unfortunately for them, they have only won one of those nationally ranked matches, but it was against UCLA back in late January. And let's hear more from Charlie about the Gauchos. They played a really challenging schedule, which they do every year, and they're always good when it gets into league play, and uh, I'm sure they're, like the other Big West schools, know that the, the postseason tournament is all comers, so it doesn't really matter what's happening until you get into that uh, tournament setting, so um, they got a lot of talented players, they're well coached, and uh, it'll, they'll be tough matches for sure. Ryan, tell us all about the Gauchos. Well, there you see the numbers for one of the players to watch, Bianchi. You see their 4.58 kills per set. The opposite player for the Gauchos is going to be one of those players who has to turn it on. You also see the numbers for Court out there hitting over 257. And Aruya, the freshman middle blocker who can really elevate in the middle, hitting 313 with 1.37 kills per set. It's going to be an interesting matchup as he goes against Jeremy Boss. All right, let's look at the season stat comparisons. Hawaii at 18 and 4, but have lost three of their last four matches. Gouchers, we mentioned, at 7-14. and 14. And, of course, you would think, and they are, most of the numbers favoring the University of Hawaii. Big time in hitting percentage and blocking and, well, pretty much everything else. Now for Hawaii, James, who should we keep an eye on? For Hawaii, we have a lot of familiar faces, starting with opposite Alakai Todd, who's been having a really good year, hitting 370, adding 3.29 kills per set. And then the silent killer, Guilherme Boss in the middle, who is hitting a lofty 529, adding one block per set and 11 aces with his float serve. And then the young freshman, Tred Rosenthal, leading this team with 10 assists per set and adding 1.35 digs, standing at six foot nine. All right, it's time now for you guys to pick your peak performers. Who's going to have a game or needs to have a big game for Hawaii, Ryan? Well, I think it's going to come down to Alaka Ita. This could be a real battle between two very good opposites. Uh, and I think Alaka Ita is going to have to continue to carry a lot of the offensive burden with the absence of Spiros Hakas. And so uh, we saw Todd had a somewhat quieter night uh, last week against that loss to Northridge. And so I think Alakai is going to be one of those players moving forward that will have to have play a big role. For me, it's going to be Luis Sakanoko, someone who's filled in for Spiros Hakas, someone who has a very big resume, but hasn't yet found his chemistry with this team. He knows that he has really big highs and has a lot of lows, but he showed us last year, last weekend, that he is dedicated to make this team better. He was all over the floor on defense. He just needs to steady out his hitting a little bit. Once he gets that hitting percentage a little bit more consistent, I think this whole team is going to start looking a little bit different. Ryan, I'm kind of curious to get your thoughts on how much of a boost is it going to be for this team to have Spiros back on the bench? Yeah, I mean, I think just overall morale, just to see a familiar face and to have that calming presence, uh, maybe a vocal leader during timeouts. We'll see how vocal and active uh, Spiros will be during this match. Uh, but I think one of the keys for Hawaii will also just have to be the overall involvement of the middle. We really saw a lack of that against uh, CSUN, and I'm hopefully Hawaii will be able to establish that middle early. Yeah, I really think having Spiros on the sideline is huge because not only is he going to be a vocal leader, but his volleyball IQ is huge. He has such experience playing volleyball at the international level against the best of the best in the world. He sees the game a little bit different than a lot of these young Hawaii players, a lot different to how Louis would see the game. So being able to have that mentorship throughout the game 
could really make a big difference. What concerns you guys about UCSB? Well, I mean, we just saw there the number of quality teams they played. This is a team that has been tested. They know what it's like to play in a difficult environment and play some of the best teams. Hawaii cannot overlook them just based on their record. Santa Barbara is known to be a very scrappy team, so I think Hawaii is going to have to be very patient with them. The kills will not come easy. They're just going to have to stay in this game. Hey, it should be a fun one. It's the last regular season home matches tonight and tomorrow. It's Hawaii and UC Santa Barbara. We'll take a break. Come back. It'll be the anthem. Hawaii Ponui and the first serve with Kanoa and Chris. I need you guys to do me a favor. Just make some noise now. Come on. Let's go, baby. Happy Aloha Friday, and welcome to another exciting evening of Warrior Ball 24! watching manifest, got my only fair. Volleyball fans, please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem and Hawaii Ponoi. Fans, please remove your hats, and veterans are encouraged to render a hand salute. Pono Entertainment proudly presents Crossing Rain. They are a local Hawaii boy band with a unique styling of pop, H-pop, rap, reggae, and R&B. H-pop, not K-pop, not J-pop, but Hawaii pop. Crossing Rain are the recipients of the prestigious Hawaii's Favorite Entertainer of the Year 2022 at the 45th Annual Nahoku Hanohano Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome to the Simplify Arena here at the Stad Sheriff Center, the one, the only, Crossing Rain. Oh, say.
Good evening, everyone. The Rainbow Ohana welcomes you to Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center on the campus of the University of Hawaii in majestic Manoa for tonight's Big West Conference men's volleyball match featuring the 20th ranked UC Santa Barbara Gauchos versus your fifth ranked Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. Introducing the UC Santa Barbara Gachos starting lineup at Libero 2, six foot junior from Corona Del Mar, California. Number one, Jaden Glenn. At opposite, six six junior from Laguna Beach, California. Number two, Jess Bianchi. At center, six three junior from Manhattan Beach, California. Floor captain number six, Jack Wolmer. And outside hitter, 6'4 sophomore from Hermosa Beach, California, number seven, Ben Korn. And middle blocker, 6'5 sophomore from Santa Barbara, California, number 10, Sam Meister. And outside hitter, 6'4 sophomore from Campbell, California, number 12, Patrick Kane. And middle blocker, 6'9 freshman from Mission Viejo, California, number 16, Josh Zaruya. And then the girl 1, 6'1 freshman from Los Gatos, California, number 17, Joe Wallace. Assistant coach Randy DeWeese, associate head coach Blaine Nielsen, head coach for the Gauchos Rick McLaughlin. A 
assistant coaches Kuhn Bolofi and Chad Giesman. Associate coach Milan Zakovic. Head coach for the Rainbow Warriors, Charlie Wade. three record in Big West play, the Rainbow Warrior volleyball team is still finding itself three weeks after losing Spiros Hakas to a season-ending injury. Hawaii has turned in large part to its veteran pin hitters in fifth year outside Chaz Galloway and sixth year opposite Alaka Itad to lift the offense and get the Warriors back to their winning ways. There's no let up in the Big West as we have another high octane Friday night fight. The Gauchos of UC Santa Barbara and the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. With that, we welcome you inside Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. Kanoa Leahy sitting next to Chris McLaughlin. C-Mac take us through the Kaiser Permanente. Keys to the match. For UC Santa Barbara, Jack's back. That is Jack Walmer, number six and former UH setter. If he can set his team to a 400 or more percentage, like CSUN night two against Hawaii last week, the Gauchos have a great chance to win. And for Hawaii, reduced errors time. This was Charlie Wade's and several players' mantra all week long. We'll see if this emphasis pans out tonight. Hawaii coming in 18 and four, one and three in the Big West Conference. UC Santa Barbara seven and 14, 0 and five in the league. And it is Tred Rosenthal who gets us started with the serve. Just Bianchi, the first swing and already a net violation called against Hawaii. Bianchi is the go-to for UCSB, 6'6", redshirt junior and southpaw from Laguna Beach, California, averaging over four and a half kills per set as the Hawaiian Financial FCU starting lineups scroll at the bottom of your screen. Ben Court to serve, crawls over the net. Good reaction there by Rosenthal just to field it. And now Louis Sakanoko with the roll shot. And it goes down. What a smart shot by Louis. Taking a little bit off. He knew the block was well lined up on him, taking his cross court. So he just lobbed it over. Kind of like a little beach roll shot. Very effective. And so it will be Louis to serve. 6'5 freshman from Paris, France. Tops in the Big West Conference in aces per set. Back row set. Goes to Ben Court, dug up over the net by Elehu Choi. Hawaii with it on its side. Here's Alaka Todd. Two hand fielded by Court. Now on the outside, that's Patrick Kane. And he's able to get it down on the Terra Flex. 6'4 sophomore from Campbell, California, averaging 1.87 kills per set. He is batting 160 on the year. It says sophomore, but you know, he didn't get any appearances last year, so he's kind like a freshman. With a very young lad, three freshmen in the world. Josh Arruya serving, 6'9 freshman from Mission Viejo, California. Outside, here's Chaz Galloway. We have a liftoff for Chaz. He has been cleared for takeoff. He is averaging just over 1.9 kills per set, hitting a buck 67 in Big West play, but also been serving it tough. Four aces and 10 blocks through four Big West matches. Two serving two. Quick middle set, and that one side swiped a little bit by Sam Leister. The connection not there, and Hawaii gets the point. There is the head coach for UC Santa Barbara, Rick McLaughlin, in his 16th year atop the program. His team four and five in road matches this season. Oh, a little extra oomph on that one by Guillaume Voss, and then Bianchi. A close in call. Charlie Wade thought it was out. No challenge coming. And we're tied at three here early. There is Charlie Wade now 287 career victories. His team coming in now ranked fifth in the latest ABCA poll. Sakanoko with the pass. Here is Kurt Neuster on the middle set. Got blocked back. Backside it's Todd. Well, that one's heavy-handed. What a dig. And now Bianchi trying to time it. It was a bit of an awkward angle. And he hits it into the net. So inching along here in the early 
stages of set one. And these teams are sort of trading blows, feeling the other, each other out. Notice why you taking a lot off their serves except for that last one. Trying to keep that ball in play and reduce their errors. Outside, Bianchi. A guy who is in his third year with UCSB has kind of burst onto the scene out of virtual nowhere, just six matches played a season ago. Yeah, pretty amazing. He went to Orange Coast College and just got his grades up so he could get into Santa Barbara. And uh, last year didn't make that many appearances. Oh, that was a nice connection there. Six appearances, only four starts. And this year, he's number two in the country in points per set and in kills per set. Meanwhile, you see the numbers for Kurt Neusterer. Efficient, even if not prolific, with the kills per set. Meanwhile, Sam Meister able to go off of Neusterer and down. He's also in his third year with the Gauchos from right there in Santa Barbara and Santa Barbara High School. A walk on, how about that? Walk on, he was kind of like an outside hitter when he came on. And he thought, well, no, oh, maybe I can play opposite. And Rick McLaughlin said, no, how about playing middle? And he said, okay. <laughs> Here's Sakanoko, big hard swing, and he gets it home. So just trading blows here early on in set one. Louis working to really reduce his errors. He had like, I want to say, eight hitting errors last night against uh, North uh, CSUN last weekend, and he really wants to cut that down. Six serving five. Backside, it's Bianchi. And you're starting to see why he is such a load to deal with. A little bit of an unorthodox approach and swing, but definitely effective. Yeah, Coach Rick McLaughlin really praises his vision, his ability to move the ball all different directions, wide fan, they call it. And a tough jump serve fielded by Choi. High ball cycles to Sakonoko. Three blockers up. And he makes it work. Three swings, three kills. I like the way Trent Rosenthal ran off the net. That little sort of squared up to his uh, setting target. Gave Louie like a really, really good set. Very hittable ball. So Rosenthal to serve. Middle set, that is Josh Oruya. And how about this fantastic looking freshman, a true frosh, 6'9", out of Mission Viejo High School. According to Volvo Magazine, he was the number three recruit in the country last year. He gets up high, hits hard, talented young man. So we're tied again. Eleu Choi gets to that serve, backside at Sakonoko. And he just attacked for his fourth foot down. Do you think Trent Rosenthal is leaning on the hot hitter? Well, Sakonoko has found his groove here in Big West play. He's averaging 3.2 kills per set and hitting 265 in Big West play. It's the Sakonoko Bianchi show so far, folks. Middle said that's a Ruya. And Aurelia wants to get in on the action, obviously. <laughs> Santa Barbara passing the ball really well right now. This is almost all their passes inside the three meter line. This is just a sparring session so far. <laughs> a little knuckle floater there by Aruya. Hawaii out of system, and it's Todd. Dug up there by Bianchi from behind the line. Bianchi will dig there. Rosenthal, long run for Sakamoko, and he can't get there. Ball winds up in the seats, and now UC Santa Barbara jumps in front. Bianchi reminded me a little bit of Rado Parapura. It's got that long, lanky look. Oh, behind the head set to Boss. Who is hitting 529 on the year? 
points over his career, I think. He's the number one all-time kill percentage leader, right, for at Hawaii? At the moment. And he's at 523 for his career, which... Unbelievable. Would definitely put him first all-time in UH volleyball history. Did that one get above the tape? They'll say it was off the block. Sakanoko taking on the set. Goes to Galloway off the block and down. Oh, you don't know the way that Louis Sakanoko steps in, took charge, and gave a really good set to Chan Galloway. Louis playing some good volleyball early here. Four swings, four kills, an assist, and a dig for the Frenchman freshman. Here's Bianchi. There's a save, two-hand style by Sakonoko. Todd off the hands and out. And Hawaii up two. That is the largest lead for either side here in this opening frame. Finally, some distance. Notice when Santa Barbara moves up, they think that, that um, Voss is going to serve his jump floor. Then all of a sudden comes up, hits his jump serve. They have to back up quickly. Outside. Time was Patrick Keane. Neuster got a good chunk of it, but it wound up out of bounds. Now you don't see that much in men's volleyball. We get, there's a, a jump floater where the opposing receivers will walk up all the way to like the three meter line, and Voss just threw a curveball at him, served two jump serves in a row. And there's Jack Walmer, the former Rainbow Warrior with the serve. Here's Todd going over the block. Getting it out of the crowd was Joe Wallace. And now a little table tennis atop the net. Here's Bianchi off the block. It's a sprawling save there by Todd. Outside, Galloway misses wide. And we're tied at 11, and there is some energy here in the building in this first set. <laughs> it really is. That set just a little wide for Chaz Galloway. Couldn't quite get it in his wheelhouse. We have already been tied 10 times in set one. Oh, and that's an ace by Jack Walmer. Second on the team with 24 aces coming in. That's number 25. And the Gauchos vault in front. Interesting that Walmer went up against his teammate right there. He served a lot of balls against Chaz, by the way. And Chaz, he knows Chaz is a really, really good passer. I'm surprised he didn't go to Sakonoko or Hawaii Choi. Walmer spent two years at Hawaii. That one goes into the net. He played in 59 sets in his last year with the Rainbow Warriors. That was in 2022. A 2020 graduate of Miracosta High School and served a match point against Long Beach State back in 2022 for the national championship. That's right. Middle set a little high there for Meister. Another set from Sakonoko and it's Todd dug up over the net by Court. Oh, how about that set? And Todd takes the line and takes the point. And this is something Charlie Wade has been emphasizing with Tread Rosenthal. He wants more against the flow sets where Tread Rosenthal is running toward the front left. He wants him to set it back the other direction. You see the block got a little bit faked out there. Couldn't get to the outside fast enough. Great set. Meanwhile, the serve goes in to the net. And that's an area Charlie Wade has said Alakai, for some reason, since conference play has begun, hasn't been as efficient. He was serving in at an over 90% rate in the non-conference stretch of the schedule. That has dropped down to around 84%. A near ace there. Outside, that's court off the block and out. And the Gauchos again lead. This has been a battle here in the first. And despite the fact Santa Barbara's record isn't all that great, they're a good volleyball team. Let me tell you, they are solid players, good young crew. Oh, that one crawls over the net. Replay the point. And they're going to replay the point due to an inadvertent whistle. I think, I think Kane served before the whistle. Ray 
Shane Mink, the R1, atop the ladder, Dixon Chun, the R2, line judges Randy Rubinall and Kerwin Stenstrom, 14 serving 13, and the serve goes long. Hawaii trying to bounce back after suffering a loss in this building against CSUN last week. A good serve there by Chaz. High ball set. Cord rolls it over. Dug up by Galloway. Outside. Sakanoko blocked the cover by Neusterer. Chaz going back to Louie. The roll shot fielded by Joe Wallace. Back row set. And that is Kane. And he gets roofed. And Hawaii gets to 15 first. Hardcore in set one. Inside the numbers presented by Long's Drugs, the number 368. That's Hawaii's NCAA leading team hitting percentage. 972 total kills, 284 errors. This is coming into tonight's match on 1,870 attempts. And last week when they lost to CSUN on Saturday night, guess what they hit? 240. Still tops in the NCAA in hitting percentage, also leading the nation in aces. 177 total coming into this match. Here is Galloway serving. Down the line, it's a good run, forces the overpass, and Trent Rosenthal gobbles it up. Wow, Trent, Superman up front. I thought that ball was coming over too far. Trent was backing up, he was on like a six foot line, and still gave it an amazing rip. Undiggable, great shot by Tred Rosenthal. The sixth time Big West Conference Freshman of the Week. Oh. Middle set, that is Meister dug up by Choi. D set goes to Todd, little broad jump approach. And it's gonna be a net violation against Santa Barbara. And Hawaii leads by three, and this is their largest lead of set one. They've scored four in a row. I don't think either team has had a four point run so far and 31 points scored. Pretty amazing. Two very evenly matched teams so far. Another good serve by Chaz. Outside and that was lit up by Ben Court. Rick McLaughlin calls him maybe the best competitor there number seven. Calls him a grinder. Wants to win every drill in practice, that kind of guy. Yeah, this is a Gaucho team that has played seven five-set matches this season. And Rick McLaughlin said, Ben Court's probably the reason why. Because he's the one that pushes us in those late match and late set situations. As Kurt Neuster is able to lay into that Rosenthal set. His coach McLaughlin was also saying that, you know, we've lost too many of those five setters, <laughs> more than we've won. So we've got to learn to play from 20 to 25 better. Keone Thim now in the serve. Well, as we have witnessed over the course of time since Big West men's volleyball was established, the margins are so minute. UCSB three and four in those five setters, by the way. And you're right, I mean, imagine how different things can be if a couple of those go the other way. Here's Bianchi, how about that set placement? Whoa. See, the toss that time for Thim wasn't great. So he pulled back, served a fairly easy serve, which allowed Santa Barbara to run a fairly easy offense that was gonna isolate any attacker that got set from Walmer. And you see Bianchi, team leader in aces, another that is number 28 on the season and that was downright nasty that was remind you a little bit of Jakob Tella in this building a year ago Tella Heno you name it yeah and that one into the twine bails Hawaii out so the Rainbow Warriors still up too Hawaii hitting 545 here in this first set. Just one hitting error. 
Meanwhile, UCSB not too bad on its side, 385 with three hitting errors. 19 serving 17, and that is service error number two for the Rainbow Warriors. Charlie Wade saying, hey look, that's still an area where we can have an advantage. We still, he believes, can be the best serving team in the country, and if they serve efficiently, he feels like they can compete with anybody. Nice pass from Leo Choi. Back row, it's Galloway. That was off the trampoline. And Choi made that happen with an almost perfect pass. Young Farrington grad popping it up right on the money. Only one step for Rosenthal to take. Oh, Sakanoko tried to unload. That was 68 miles an hour on the radar gun. Almost knocked the radar gun <laughs> off its railing up there. Now we'll have a serving sub here. Sam Collins, 6'2 redshirt junior from Manhattan Beach, California. Out of Miracosta High School. He's 6'2", but has a 6'7 wingspan, so here comes the long arm serve, and he sends it long. I was walking by him during warm-ups, I said, hey Sam, serve area five, will you? <laughs> so he's back, and he gets back and just rips it, hits both lines, the back line and the sideline in area five. <laughs> he looked at me and said, will you be my serving coach, please? <laughs> that was funny. Here is Kevin calling now to serve for Hawaii. So some serving sub calls by both coaches at a high leverage juncture of this opening frame. And it's a great one. It's an ace by Kevin Colley. And Colley did not have a great toss that time. Amazing he got an ace out of it. Because it was way behind the line. Normally the, the jump servers like to get that ball tossed in front of the back line. 22 serving 19. The pass there by Court. Middle set bounced in the middle of the floor by Sam Meister. Meister hitting 368 on there. He doesn't miss many shots, I'm telling you. He's got one error tonight, but I doubt if he'll make many more errors. He's got a kill, two, now two kills. This has been high level volleyball here in this first set. And now the dangerous Jack Walmer to serve. Took a little something off, made sure he got it in. Right side set goes to Todd. Two blockers up and he goes OTT. I even though that pass was off the net. Boy, it's definitely out of system here. Still far, Rosenthal's got to come up beyond the three meter line. But he puts up a nice set for Olakai to put the ball OTT, as you said, over the top and down in the back row. You see his season number is the 370 kill percentage. That's still ninth in the nation. He's got four kills, no errors so far in this one. 23 serving 20. That one grazes the tape. Gaucho's out of system. The tip shot there by Kane. Chance for Hawaii. D set Sakanoko. Oh, he annihilates it. A new wrinkle. Louis hasn't hit that D ball in about three months. And somehow or another, Trevor Rosedahl knew that Louis was in the back row in the D spot. Look at this. Great set, split block, Barry. Aloha ball for set one. High and away, it's Bianchi off the block. And out for a UCSB point. Bianchi now with seven kills. Again, these are the hardest points to get, the ones between 20 and 25. Came to serve. Rosenthal tracking down that set. Goes high ball to Galloway, and he pops it out. Point for the Gauchos. The lead for Hawaii is two, and Charlie Wade not going to mess around here. He signals for a timeout. He's going to calm things down just a little bit. Hawaii still sitting on a low ball in set one. 
Order Pizza Hut now and get a free large pizza later. That's a free pizza on your next order. So you can pizza now, then pizza again. Free pizza means your next dinner is covered. Your future self will thank you. Get it while it's hot. Only at Pizza Hut. 11 years ago, I never thought I'd be facing stage 4 cancer. But there I was. Throughout my career, I'd helped families deal with an unexpected crisis. But now I needed to help my own. After my cancer battle, I wanted to give other families the peace of mind that having a financial plan gave mine. And I even got the chance to train the next generation of advisors. I'm Chris Otto from Bank of Hawaii, and I'm proud to help local families be prepared for anything life brings them. think alike. And with so many ways to catch up with what's on sale, we always know that Arlong's has everything we need. Make longs a part of your day. Order Pizza Hut now and get a free large pizza later. That's a free pizza on your next order. So you can pizza now, then pizza again. Free pizza means your next dinner is covered. Your future self will thank you. Get it while it's hot. Only at Pizza Hut. Welcome back. Don't miss a second of the action. Watch Spectrum Sports on the go. The Spectrum News app has the local sports you love and the news and weather that matter most to you. You can download today on the App Store or Google Play. Great timeout by Charlie Wade. Setting up a, a play here on a good pass. It's a Aloha ball in set one. Not a great pass by Sakonoko. The bump set from Galloway and Todd hits it out. And that's three straight UC Santa Barbara points. And Charlie Wade going to signal for another timeout. Hawaii just needs a pass here, C-Mac. Yeah, if they could use one desperately, but credit Santa Barbara for serving the ball well. I mean, serving it tough from behind. Taking a little bit of a risk on each of their serves, but it's paying off for sure. And Gaucho's coming in a little shorthanded. Missing one of their top freshman recruits in 6'10 outside George Bruning. Uh, he is looking to likely redshirt this year as he has been dealing with a hip injury. Uh, also, uh, Owen Berg, who is one of their pin hitters, uh, has played both outside and opposite. Uh, he is dealing with a stress fracture in his lower leg and is likely unavailable here uh, this week. So uh, you have in the situation of like Patrick Kane getting a little bit more playing time obviously in the absence of Owen Burke and uh, some other ancillary pieces that Rick McLaughlin is having to utilize. All right, let's send it over to Ryan Kalei Suji. Ryan. Hey, thanks, Kono. Well, here on the UCSB sideline, the coaching staff very enthused about what they're seeing these last few points. They said this is the game plan. They're sticking to it. Right now, one of the concerns is they want to get Hawaii out of system and do a triple block on Chaz Galloway. They feel that the likelihood of, that Hawaii is going to go to the senior outside hitter uh, if they're in trouble here, but they're also they have to watch out. Boys are spending a lot of time talking about their hand position over the block. One thing they do not want is for Hawaii to use that blocker. So a lot of attention being played with their hand position over the net. So try to wait in the meantime, try to try, take time to talk to his friend and center about all of his options. We'll see what happens coming out of this time out. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot. Since Hawaii hit the 20 point mark, they have had three unforced errors. And they've been sitting on this Aloha ball now for a bit. This is the fourth set point. Kane to serve. Pass by Sakonoko, a good one. Oh, but the back row set wasn't there. Louis had fallen to the floor. Advantage Gauchos. Bianchi blocked back. UCSB still with it. Bianchi from off the net. Dug up by Todd. Going to be a joust up there. Good save there by Eleu Choi. Here's Galloway, the tip. Pancake save over the net by Walmer. Now Choi. High ball to Galloway. And it is finally over. What a rally. Both teams had their chances. Boy coming through with some clutch plays. Great set by Eleu Choi. Oh, oh had to earn it on set point. But finally, it was Chaz ripping it home. Rainbow Warriors take the first, 25-23. 
Welcome back. Time now for the Hawaii Honda dealers highlight reel. And Louie Louie, oh baby, in that first set. Special five kills, no errors in seven tries, hitting it all a mere 714. Hawaii overall hitting 483. About 100 points above their normal season average. Santa Barbara also playing well, only three hitting errors. They're hitting 375. That's a good number for them. You see the stat line for Sakanoko. How important is he here as Hawaii tries to figure out the combinations that are going to put them in their prime position, at least as close to prime as possible, come Big West Conference tourney time in a few weeks. Kanoe, his growth is vital to the success of this team. He's got to become, he's trying to become a better passer. She does, he doesn't want to be a liability there. He's trying to become a more versatile outside hitter, a more consistent one that isn't making errors. And so far tonight, he's doing that. No errors, by the way. Uh, got a couple digs. He's actually got an assist as well. So he's becoming the all-around player that I think Charlie Wade wants him to be. Well, one thing that is not going to be of concern is he is not going to shy away from the responsibility. He's not a guy who is going to be overwhelmed by the pressure at all. That doesn't seem to bother him in any way. No, he, he embraces stress for sure. So Hawaii have one set to none. Chess Bianchi gets... is how good Gary Boss is. He'll find a way to put it down even when two blockers are up. The middle set goes to Josh Aruya. Hawaii playing it back. And now it'll be the Gauchos on the attack. Here's Bianchi from behind the line, tried to go wrist away and hits it into the net. Only his second error of the night. He's hitting 462 before that. Seven kills in the first set. You see why he's, like you said earlier, Kanoa, you see why he's the number two kill leader in the country. Here's Tred Rosenthal now getting ready to serve. It is two serving zero here to start set two. Good serve by Rosenthal. How about that sprawling pass by Kane? Tip shot, pancake saved by Tread. Gauchos will play it back. D set, Bianchi, one blocker against him. And this time the wrist away works. Well, it's re they're really, the Gauchos are really, really tough in that particular rotation where Bianchi's hitting that D ball and Arroyo's hitting the quick. Ben Court, 6'4", redshirt sophomore from Hermosa Beach with the serve. That one slowed down by the net. Here's Sakonoko. Pinballed around, free ball coming back over. Advantage Hawaii. It's Louie again, a little tight to the pin though. And so it is going to be a point for UCSB. That set just drifted on Tread a little bit there. I'm surprised Tread didn't go out to the left. All the traffic was over there on the right side. Blockers are over there ready for him already. And so the first hitting error of the night for Louie. And it is two serving two. Rosenthal going right back to Sakonoko, and he gets stuffed. You had Josh Aruya jumping up next to Patrick Kane and shutting the door. That's a great block by the Gauchos. Kane pressing over the net and down. So three serving two as UCSB takes the lead. Now we're tied. Yeah, Patrick Kane who had that block, another one of the youngins here on this roster in his second season with UCSB, although he did not play in 2023.
Louis to serve. Curls it over. Here's Aruya. No, they go outside to Kane. Nice job there by Alaka Itad off the block with the up. His swing doesn't go though. Now Kane tried to push Dinkit through. Choi with the bump set. Galloway, three blockers up and it doesn't matter. Another assist for Eliu Choi. Eliu Choi's having a good night tonight. Nice picture of Chaz. Chaz a nice job of doing a little wrist away shot at the last second. Got the closing blocker of that third gaucho blocker and uh, made a big difference. So rather than going out the high hands there, I think he wanted to just find a way to go around because he's missed the last couple of high hands, hit him long. So four serving three, Hawaii back in front. Oh, that was a smoker by Louie. Great transition though by UCSB as they work it to just Bianchi who gets kill number nine to tie it up. Well, he's having quite the night. So much like Hilaire Hanno. <laughs> he... I was just thinking that. Oh my goodness. Great vision, great, great arm swing. Overpass. Court gonna set up Bianchi from behind the line and he missed it wide. Yeah, Hawaii fans get a little tired of these dynamic lefties who can hit from all angles and hit for incredible prolific numbers. Yeah. Great story on Bianchi too about how he wanted, how badly he wanted to go to the University of California, Santa Barbara, but didn't have the grades. And then McLaughlin said, well, you better get him or you're not coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the roof as Kurt Neuster was able to get a good piece of that one. I think it's because he won the chess match today. <laughs> He's feeling pretty confident of his life in general. It's been it's been kind of leaning against him in recent weeks. And Alex, so, yeah, perhaps the, the tides are turning. Yeah, Alex Park has been had his number, but tonight it was all Kurt. Oh, what a serve by Got Voss. Yeah, a little pace there from Voss. And then the roof again. Neuster jumping up next to Todd saying, uh-uh. Largest lead in set two for the home team. And the Gaucho signaling for a timeout. Neusterer sending it back. Well, anybody that was watching last night's broadcast of Rainbow Baseball saw this about 82 times. Uh, we're showing it again. First pitch last night before Hawaii and UC Irvine's opener. Uh, Scott Robs and myself, uh, as we were present for a dedication ceremony uh, that named the press box after the great Don Robs and, of course, uh, my pops, the late Jim Leahy. Uh, we have the updated score from Les Murakami Stadium. It's 7-1 and eaters on top of the home team in the fourth. But it was a special moment uh, that was only tainted by the lackluster location of the first pitches by uh, Scott and yours truly. Scott got halfway there, I think. <laughs> they didn't even bounce it, you bounced it. Mine, mine sailed a little bit on me. Sailed just a little bit. Yeah. You should have pitched from second base. That's oh, what you should have done. It would have been a perfect strike if I was throwing from center field. <laughs> <laughs> Five serving seven. And the serve goes long. I don't know why Wolver's picking on Galloway, his old teammate. For sure, I thought he'd go at Sakanoko or Leo Chai, the two newbies. Instead, he's going at the veteran Galloway. Interesting dynamic with these former Hawaii players as starting setters elsewhere in the Big West Conference, yes. right? Yes. We got Shuey with UC Irvine. Here's Walmer here with the Gauchos. Walmer setting up Kane to push Dave, dug up over the net, and then put down there. Nice reaction by Sam Meister. Had to kind of hang up there for a little bit. Six serving eight. Pass by Galloway is a beauty. And then the set out to Chaz. And he levitates. That was basically perfect pass, perfect set, perfect hit. Couldn't write it up any better, Kanoa. And Chaz was in for two parts of, the, of that particular combination. Yeah, that was as good as it gets right there. Nine serving six. Here's Bianchi. 
And that one put down. Now you wonder, in a, in a five set match, he's had, what, seven of them this year? They're three and four. I wonder if he gets tired at all. Because <laughs> he's getting a lot of sets. Now he's got 19 attempts here so far in this one with 10 kills. First player on the floor in double figures, Kurt Neuster. You know, his kill numbers have kind of tapered off a little bit in conference play, but that's kill number three for him, error free. The number of sets that the middles got last week against uh, CSUN were dwindling a little bit, especially on night number two. Looks like uh, here tonight, they're getting them more involved, even though there's blockers up on them. Hawaii up three. Outside, that's Court blocked back. The cover by Kane. Court again, the quick sprawl. Good cover by Aruya. Now the other side, it's Bianchi through the block and down. He is so difficult to stop. And a wonderful side set that time from Jack Walmer. And Bianchi, as you said, he's a tough out. As you say in baseball, right? <laughs> serving. Pass by Choi is a good one and over on two goes Tread. I don't think he's been blocked or dug this year in that shot. It's a, it's a tough one to read because he turns to the last second and then goes down. Hard for the blockers to read that and figure that one out. 11 serving eight. Rosenthal now with the serve. Pass drifts over the net. And it's going to be a point for UCSB. They're going to say that Voss was the last to touch it. G. Voss is saying, no, I was the first to touch it. It deflected off of the Gauchos. Could be a challenge coming up here. We'll see. The explanation there from Dixon Chun to Charlie Wade. I'm not sure if Charlie Wade is satisfied with what he's hearing. Oh, looks like the yeah. last touch is on number six. Roma. The crowd reacting to the replay showing above. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. The crowd knows the right call. I'm pretty sure we know what that fan's opinion is of this. Let's take a look from this angle. Touch by Voss. Touched by Walmer last. Yeah. They got a challenge. Charlie Wade's got to challenge that. That angle looks conclusive that it was yeah. Walmer who was last to touch it. And it, it appeared as though Voss was the first to touch it. And that usually leads to the fact that you're able to get the deflection off of that second hand, right? Second touch is usually the one that loses the battle. In most cases, if exactly. it winds up out of bounds. Interesting, interestingly enough, uh, Walmer's hand was going in the direction where the ball went out. So he had a, a big part in directing the ball where it went. Interesting joust here. The two former Hawaii teammates, G. Voss and Jack Walmer. Yeah, there's, there's Walmer at the last touch. I haven't seen an angle that has given us any reason to think otherwise. Yeah. I don't think, have we seen the net cam yet? I'm not sure we've seen the net cam view yet. Well, the net cam's only on the other system, DVS system. Oh, there it is, there it is. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. Well, Dixon Chun taking a long, hard look at this thing. This is, this well, is too long. They're going to start playing the Jeopardy music here pretty soon. I like that idea. <laughs> Well, we'll be back for the Hanaho rematch tomorrow night. It's going to be senior night, Hawaii and UCSB and the Rainbow Warriors. 
saying aloha symbolically to six members of the senior class. And the call is overturned. It is Hawaii Point and Charlie Wade triumphant on the challenge. But you have Guilherme Voss, Chaz Galloway, Spiros Hakas, who is in the building, Alaka Todd, Kevin Calling, and Austin Buchanan, who are going to be honored at the conclusion of the match tomorrow and night. Voss and Walmer had a nice <laughs> exchange. Like, exchange at the net. They high fived each other and uh, I should say low fived under the net. Had a good laugh about it. Walmer knows that he touched it last. So 12 serving eight, little breathing room here for Hawaii. Can they take advantage? Walmer going D set to Bianchi. And Sakonoko got the touch, but it goes out. And a point for the Gauchos. Kill number 12 for Jess Bianchi. Would the word spindly describe Bianchi at all? I like it. How about that reaction by Choi? Middle set, Boss, who lays the smackdown. And immediately, his pepper partner, Elena, he hands up all the credit to his pepper partner, Elena Choi. Last play by Choi. Keeping the ball on his own side of the net. Perfect pass. And Boss going up against a really good middle blocker in Josh Arruya. Here is Arruya. Right on cue. Told you it was good, didn't oh, I? Man. <laughs> that was some straight fire right there. Speaking of the uh, Voss and Eleu Choi Pepper partnership, uh, you were a little too up close and personal with that pregame. Uh, I'm in concussion protocol now, <laughs> as you. So, so please don't talk too loud, okay? And if they could turn the lights down in here, that would be better too. Or get me some sunglasses, I don't care. <laughs> but I'm definitely in protocol. I took a straight shot from Guillermo Voss. Oh, it went to Choi, it got it right in the face, right in the jaw. I'm still dislocated <laughs> in my, my jaw. Wow. And, and Troy comes over and says, sorry, Coach Mack, I'm so sorry. I said, well, why didn't you dig it? He said, he hit it 10 feet from me. I couldn't, no way I could dig it. Well, we appreciate you, C-Mac, uh, playing, playing through the discomfort here. <laughs> I took one for the team, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh, that's set a little low. Bianchi two hands it over. Rosenthal going outside Galloway. Oh, he went up on the flying carpet and a little hanger and touch tip for the Hawaii point. They get to 15 first in set two. Welcome back, Hawaii. Coming out of the timeout, up by four, 15-11. It is Chaz Galloway leading the way offensively with seven kills. He's hitting 500. Louis Sakonoko with five kills, hitting 273. Hawaii hitting 462 in this set and 476 for the match here yeah. thus far. Those are some big, those are 100 points over their normal season average. The punch up save there by Sakonoko. Here's Galloway, three blockers up. It crawls over the net. Back bump set, Bianchi wrist away, dug up by Todd, nicely done. Back row, Sakonoko dug up over the net. Neustor couldn't get it down. From the back row, that's court. He's blocked. Bump set. Now it's going to be Kane giving it a try and a net violation against Hawaii ends a lengthy rally. I'm surprised Charlie Wade didn't uh, ask for the uh, over the three meter line call on Bianchi. In the very first play, Bianchi came off the court, but he went over the line. Hard to tell from where Charlie's standing, though. 15 serving 12, it's Walmer. And it's an ace. That is his second ace of the match. This is a UCSB team that averages 1.3 aces per set. That is last in the Big West Conference. Not, they, not looking like it tonight. No, they've got three aces in this one. Hawaii with one. What a pass there by Chaz. Backside, Todd! Ignites 
That was Chaz Galloway at his finest in serve receive. Give him the point. With all due credit to Alakai Todd, this is a great hit, but the thing that made that point was Chaz Galloway's effort on the pass. And look, Alakai. Oh, good credit. Giving I like him the that. shout. Yep. Alakai, give him the shout out. 16 serving 13. Todd now with five kills. Serve goes into the twine, however. So Hawaii with four service errors to its one ace. Second error of the night for Alakai Todd from the service line. Here's Kane. Pass by Sakonoko is a good one. He gets the set from the back row and then gets denied. Ben Court getting most of that one. After a hot start, Louis Sakonoko cooling off a little bit. Sam Meister was up there on that block as well. 15 serving 16. Largest lead for Hawaii was four in this second frame. And it is another ace. This time dealt out of the deck by Patrick Kane. And we are tied at 16, a 5-1 Gaucho run. Timeout, Rainbow Warriors. We'll take a break as well. We start anew in set two. Welcome back, Rainbow Warrior Baseball. Gonna be on the agenda on Tuesday as they host the Hawaii Pacific Sharks. Our coverage on Spectrum Sports begins at 6.15. A midweek one-off affair. Meanwhile, update from Les Murakami Stadium. It is 8-3 UC Irvine. Hawaii trying to rally back in the bottom of the fourth inning. And out of the timeout, a service error there by Patrick Kane, and Hawaii reclaims the lead. They led by as many as four here in the second. And here we are now in a grinder on the back half of set two. Galloway with the serve. Man, he has been locked in from the service line. Bianchi, blocked, hand roofed! Louis Sakonoko jumping up next to Kurt Neusser. Blocking just Bianchi tonight has been about as rare as snow in Waikiki. I'm telling you. Look at this. He's, he's been a puzzle that Hawaii hasn't been able to solve at all. The blockers can't block him. The diggers can't dig him. That's Court. And he's able to go off of Rosenthal and down. Great pass there by Joe Wallace. Another frosh on this roster, 6-1 from Los Gatos, California. Has essentially taken over the libero position here in recent weeks. And beating out a guy in Jaden Glenn who is awfully good yes. as Louis Sakonoko, awfully good on that swing there for the Hawaii point. Yeah, Jaden Glenn had a great match against uh, Long Beach State recently. And, uh, but just, Joe Wallace on a hunch, on a hunch. Rick McLaughlin's gone with him, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Jaden Glenn come in at some point and help out. 19 serving 17, here's Keone Thim. That was some heat, 70 miles an hour. Bianchi blocked the cover there by Wallace. Bianchi a second time, blocked and roofed. Two blocks in a row, unheard of. The Manoa Roofing Company putting on their hard hats. G Voss returning it to sender, jumping up next to Louie. Both guys did a nice job of pressing over the net and down. Not much room between their forearms and the cable. Hawaii now with four blocks in this set alone. They have five total for the match. Well, we have a little break in the action. Let's check in with Ryan. Thanks to, thanks to Noah. Well, here on the Hawaii sideline, much of these, this second set has been spent talking about passing. Head coach Charlie Wade, in the last time off, very adamant to his passes, pulling all of them off the bench, not allowing them to sit down, and really getting in their faces about really making sure that they're confident in their platform, making sure that they're moving their feet, 
They're even talking about areas and times where they may go into a four-man passing rotation, where they'll bring Alakai Todd back into the rotation if Hawaii gets stuck. Recognizing that this is a very good serving Gaucho team, but Charlie Reid really wants to emphasize the passers here in the second set. Back over to you guys. Interesting, yeah. That, um, I, mean, I really like when the when coaches have the diversity out there to have their players go into a four-man pattern without having to call timeout. You know, whoever is calling the, 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 the serve-receive patterns, usually it's the libero, uh, to call for one more person in in case things are getting tough or you want to throw a different look at the server. Now they're looking at four passers instead of three. They can often, you know, um, be very, very effective, especially against servers who really serve it hard. Well, it is the final homestand of the regular season for Hawaii. It's uh, kind of mind-blowing to think that tomorrow night is senior night. This early in the season, they still have two more weeks of regular season action. It'll both take place on the road before everybody returns back to the islands for the Big West Conference Tournament. When we interviewed Charlie the other day, he was befuddled as to why he's playing two back-to-back -back at home and then two away and finishing that way. He thought usually it alternates weekends, home and then away. Out of the timeout, Thim. Another heater. Backside, Bianchi off the block. Thim the cover. Rosenthal with options, goes to Voss, and he whiffs on it. Oh, a golden opportunity there for Hawaii in transition. And G. Voss, who was telling us last week, uh, he does not hesitate to deliver constructive criticism to his young 17-year-old freshman setter and uh, remarks that the thing that makes Tred Rosenthal so special is he's very receptive to it. Absolutely. But certainly a teachable moment there on that one as they were a little miscommunicated. Aruya got under it. Aruya on the year hitting 313, a little low for a middle attacker. Middle attackers are usually in the high 300s, low 400s at least. And then there's Voss, hit 500. 21 serving 18, Rosenthal. Dsec goes to Bianchi, plugs it through the block. And a good layout effort by Eliu Choi, but for not, Bianchi kill number 13, hitting 259. He's hitting 277 on the year. After missing the last couple getting blocked, he seems like he's back in form now. And court blasts it long. So Hawaii closing in here, up three, three points away. And it is Louis Sakonoko to serve. The high toss. Oh, and he just missed it. You know why that was definitely out? Because it hit the line judge. <laughs> yeah. Kind of right in the shoe. That's why they stand out of bounds. Yeah. Now we're going to have a serving sub here. It's going to be Sam Collins, who's trying to get his uh, warm-up pants off there. <laughs> That took a while. That's a little embarrassing. A little wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> 20 serving 22. And it's a good serve. Todd going to set up. Galloway over the block. Good sliding save there by Bianchi. Kane couldn't get it down. One hand behind the head, sent to Voss by Rosenthal. Oh, the trickery. That looked like it was going to be an overpass for sure. Rosenthal intercepts it, and then gives the one-handed back set for a touch and nice adjustment by G. Voss. That was just some straight freestyling by the Frosch. And Voss didn't get it flush, but he still got it down. Hawaii up three here, two points away. It's improv at its best. You gotta love it. Yeah. 
Voss with that serve, that knuckle floater. Here's Kane blasting it through the block. Patrick Kane, who was an AVCA first team All-American as a senior at Mountain View High School in California. Also first team All-League in basketball. <laughs> you can hoop it. So 21 serving 23 and the dangerous Jack Walmer behind the line to serve. Pass by Choi is a beauty. Outside Galloway had the challenge on the joust with the left hand. He gets it back, the quick reset, scrapes the block, gets the kill, gets the point. And Hawaii has a Aloha ball in set two. How about that lightning quick reload for Chaz. Yeah, Chaz had to get back and get an approach in a hurry. He did a nice job of adjusting. Todd to serve for the set. It's a good one, overpass, punched down by Neusser, and Hawaii takes set two, 25-21. The Rainbow Warriors post four total blocks in the set. And in this series opener against the Gauchos, they will have an opportunity to crack open the broom closet. Here the Pizza Hut match statistics delivered hot and fresh. And, well, Hawaii's offense pretty hot and fresh through those first two sets, C Mac. Yeah, they really are. You know, they're averaging like 370 on the air. So to be hitting 420 right now is really a good number. Blocking is always also coming together. Five to two, doubling up in the gauchos. Digs. Hawaii good doing better when uh, they're getting touches in the block and making a the back throw dig. And finally, this is the one concern I think Charlie Wade's going to have. So his team has been aced. Four, four times. Yeah, interesting. That's that, unusual for Hawaii. Uh, interesting that Hawaii is putting on this kind of performance. And hey, look, those are two very tightly contested sets, make no mistake. But the fact that Hawaii has been so efficient offensively and been able to win the first two sets despite uh, not having its most uh, effective scoring match from the service line. They've been getting some serves in, obviously not a, a ton of service errors, uh, but they have been efficient in other areas. Certainly their passing has been pretty sharp for the most part here. I would totally agree. The one thing uh, I would agree with the quarter crew that uh, they're concerned that this, this Santa Barbara team is so gritty and so tough and so uh, seasoned and going in five, five set matches. Uh, I'm sure the coach was off and said, okay, We've had seven five-setters this year. Let's go have another one. I'm sure you <laughs> tell us something like that. Because this guy right here can light it up. 13 kills on the night, more than anybody in the gym. Six errors. He's hitting 250. For Hawaii, eight. Chaz Galloway with eight kills. Sakanoka with six kills. Really cooled off. He had five kills the first set. Only one in the second. But Galloway, look at him hitting four. 29. Charlie Wade will take that number from number from an outside hitter anytime. Yeah, and there was a consideration that Chaz was maybe just the steady Eddie guy, the more reliable guy at the, the pin, certainly in serve receive, but that perhaps Keone Thim would be the fitting serving sub for him. But Chaz has raised his level from the service line for sure over the last couple of weeks, where Charlie's just letting him run all the way through. Absolutely. Backside, here's Alakai, blocked back. The cover there by Chaz. Aruya going down, he's still on the Terraflex, and he looks to be in some pain here. Slowly getting up. Meanwhile, Sakanoko goes off the block and down, and now Josh Aruya being helped by a couple of his teammates. He came down awkwardly and now concerned for him. And be, uh, Yeah, it might be his knee, the knee that's, that's wrapped up. What do you think? Uh, this arena. And these fans uh, all too familiar with these kinds of awkward landings. And there looked like he rolled that left ankle as he was coming down next to Ben Court. Yeah, he's reaching for the ankle. And so he's at least able to walk off under his own power. And, and that's certainly a positive sight to see. But uh, concern now for Josh Aruya. Meanwhile, a good swing there by Ben Court. Ben Court, an amazing high school career. Player of the year in the CIF. Two times all CIF. One CIF state championships. 
So you saw Owen Longcar now on the floor for UCSB, 6'3", sophomore from Pacific Palisades, California, out of Loyola High School in his second year with UC Santa Barbara. Is turning 20 years of age next month. Two serving one, Sakonoko making sure he got it in. Desek, and that is Bianchi. Are they gonna give Hawaii the roof? They are. That was Voss jumping up next to Chaz. You know, interesting, Longcar is a 6'3 sophomore who didn't play at all last year. He's an outside hitter. But he's coming in for the 6'9 Josh Arruya. See if Hawaii even blocks or pays any attention to him at all in the middle. High ball set goes to Kane off the block. Good reaction there by Choi to center it. Galloway up the elevator shaft. And he detonates. Interesting set there by Ted Rosenthal. He fired that thing out there pretty quickly. Not the normal high lob. It's out there pretty quickly. The blockers had to move quickly to get to the outside. And Galloway just crushed it. So oh, he's playing well. Four serving one, Sakonoko. And again, took a little too much off that time. Service error number six on the night for Hawaii. Santa Barbara with nine service errors. So here is the freshly inserted long car. Perfect pass there by Choi. Middle set, Paul. Light clockwork. That ball was set from the up the eight foot line. I like it when Roosevelt takes a bit of a chance. He's got to step off the net, turn, and he's got a pretty large window. Good hang time to set the middle blocker, the G Voss. Voss Two time All American. Yeah, now with six kills hitting 625. And then punches up the save there. High ball set here. Chaz off the triple block. What a save there out of the bench area by Bianchi. Block slowing that down. Sakonoko changes his mind midair to set up Alakai Todd. And they're going to call an interference against Hawaii. Charlie Wade is dismayed. And a lot of palms pointed upwards and shoulders shrugging on the Hawaii side of the net. A peculiar call to say the least. That was a strange call. How about that decision by Louie first off? They're gonna say that Todd interfered because he reached over the net onto the UCSB side, but that clearly looked like it was at best a 50-50 ball. Yeah, I, I'm, that surprised me. And Charlie Wayne is not gonna protest anymore, nor is he gonna get a challenge. Three serving five, it's Walmer. Rosenthal going outside, Galloway off the block and down. Chaz is in his bag, and he gets to double figures. He's got 10 kills. He's, he's feeling it right now, that's for sure. Charlie Wade talking about Chaz Galloway and just saying as we anticipate senior night and some of the emotion of that tomorrow, uh, saying Chaz Galloway is one of those guys, when he was born, uh, the Lord was in a good mood that day. <laughs> because he certainly has been gifted a whole lot, has earned a whole lot as well as Kurt Neustor got a whole lot of that set. I love that set by Trent Rostock. Did not use that set that much against uh, CSUN last weekend, but tonight he's starting to bring out some different, different tools with Neustor and with Voss. Yeah, the middle's getting a whole lot of action, C-Mac. I know you love seeing that. They were getting 23% up first two sets. And that's an ace. They're gonna call a touch. I think they ruled that it landed out, but they're gonna call a touch against UCSB. Immediately, it's gonna be challenged by Rick McLaughlin. Well, Rick McLaughlin was not too far from where this ball landed. Let's see what happens here. Let's... Oh, 
a little hard to tell. It, it looked as though the officials thought that Patrick Kane diving after that just got a piece of it. That was the call on the floor, so are we going to see something that will allow them to overturn this? That was a pretty filthy serve by Alakai Ita, by the way. The linesman immediately called a touch, so you got to see if the ball changes flight at all. Looks like he pulls his hand out of the way. Just missed hitting the sideline anyway. And they're going to say there was no touch. So the challenge by McLaughlin works. And it goes from 8-3 to four serving seven. Yeah. Well, what a difference, difference it makes when your challenge is successful. Big time. Kane serving. Hits it out. That's the 11th service error for UCSB. I mean, you get the feeling as we slowly head down this stretch of Big West Conference regular season matches and approach the conference tournament as that one goes long. You get the feeling. Anybody, I mean, it sounds trite, but certainly, and even cliche, but certainly I think in this year as, as much as ever, anybody can beat anybody in this Big West Conference. I mean, we saw CSUN take down UC Irvine earlier this evening, and it just feels like as teams get healthier, hopefully closer to tournament time, that it's going to be an absolute Royal Rumble in here for the Big West Conference tourney as Rosenthal was able to find the open floor. Put on your calendars, folks. April 18, 19, and 20. It's going to be some amazing volleyball. And there's some amazing touch right there <laughs> by Trent Rosenthal. How savvy was that? Because he's got all that international experience and He's got all the shots. Oh, well, that was a heavy serve there by Neusterer. Heavy swing by Court, dug up over the net by Sakonoko. Middle set, that will not be returned. Owen oh, Longcar, lay in the wood. Did I say he was an outside hitter? <laughs> yes, you did. I make my, I, I apologize to Longcar. That was, what sweet swing. I got an important Santa Barbara side out. Bianchi sends it into the string. Hawaii by four. Rosenthal. Good serve. Bumps at Bianchi. Oh, he had a long way to leap. Got blocked back. They go outside this time to court. And he caught that in the sweet spot. That's a court crush if you've ever seen one. <laughs> wow. Great set from Jack Walmer as well. Only one blocker up. Even the 6-9. Oh, I Todd couldn't stop that. How about the pass by Eleu Choi? He's been doing that all match long, and then Sakonoko off the hands and down for his eighth kill. But Eleu Choi, we gotta give him some props. He has been nails in serve receive here so far tonight. He has been right on the money. G Voss held the blockers a little bit and gave Sakonoko a moving block. And Sakonoko misses wide. Looking like he's just a little indecisive yeah, on his serves. Yeah, he didn't like his toss for sure, so he let up. But he let up a little bit too much. Had no accuracy there at all. Eight serving 11, long car of the serve. Another good effort there by Choi. And then Galloway hits it out. Was there a touch? No touch. So nine serving 11. Oh, I thought there was a touch there. It looked like there was one. Largest lead for Hawaii was four just moments ago. 
Pass by Choi, tight to the net, one hand set to Voss. Oh, that was pretty from Rosenthal. And this is becoming quite the show between Voss and Rosenthal because Voss just seems to know when that's gonna happen. So he's up there in the air waiting. But look at how high <laughs> above the net that exchange takes place. Yeah. Bianchi off the high hands, punched up in the air, but out of play by Sakanoko. So Bianchi now with 14 kills. Gaucho's hitting 250 here in this third frame. They have Four kills with one hitting error. Hawaii hitting 538, eight kills with one hitting error. But just a two point separation here on the scoreboard and Walmer to serve. And he misses wide. <laughs> Hawaii coming off of that loss against CSUN at home. We mentioned CSUN winning against UC Irvine earlier tonight. But that loss snapped a 14-match home win streak for the Rainbow Warriors. They're trying to get back to their winning ways as Court goes off of the block and down. Great pass by Joe Wallace there. See, all the cut and got all of that serve. Wallace popped it right, in, right on the money. Pass by Sakonoko was nice. Salaka Itad trying to avoid the block. Good dig there by Kane. And then the set a little misplaced. And it winds up down on the UCSB side. Give Hawaii the block, give Hawaii the point. Yes. Through the turnstile tonight, they were expecting a sizable crowd. Through the turnstile, 6,541 here. And tomorrow will be even bigger. Oh, yeah. Senior Karen night. Saying goodbye to Spiros. All the rest of the seniors. Sam Meister to serve. Rosenthal had to go chase that one down. Sakonoko from behind the line. An artsy shot. Bianchi, deep corner, may have been an out ball played by Alaka Itad, and it winds up in our area. And Tred Rosenthal almost took us all out. <laughs> we could have all been in concussion yeah. protocol. <laughs> we, uh, we saw so many previous volleyball broadcasts flash before our eyes right there. <laughs> Oh, nice pass by Choi. D set goes to Todd with a broad jump approach. And so here's Court. Tough angle. And he really had nowhere to go with it. And so Hawaii gets the point. They're first of 15 here in set three. They're up two sets to none. Tight one again in the third. Welcome back. So Eleu Choi wearing it tonight. The rest of the team will wear it tomorrow night. These Excite jerseys, special edition Rainbow Warrior volleyball jerseys. They are available via an online auction. QR code is on your screen. If you go to uhevent.com, you can also access the online auction, which includes these unique jerseys. Again, the whole team wearing the jersey tomorrow night. Eleo Choi wearing it as the libero here tonight. The auction will close at 10.30 p.m. tomorrow night. So uh, get on over to uhevent.com, or if you were able to uh, scan the QR code, then you're in business. Charlie Wade told me the other day, I'll be bidding during the game. <laughs> Here's Keone Thim out of the timeout. Tried to go deep corner and missed it wide. So just a one point separation here at this stage of set three. A lot of fans of these jerseys that the rest of the team is wearing here this evening as well. Hawaii bringing the style here in 2024. Here's Bianchi to serve. 
Pass by Choi is on point. And G Boss hammers it down. That was whip, authority, great connection, great pass from Choi. Block can't get up fast enough. He's just too quick. So Voss now up to eight kills. He's hitting 700. Huh. Hold on. Outside court. Trying to avoid the block. Did he get a touch? No touch. And so Hawaii back up three. McLaughlin's got two timeouts left. My guess is that he won't let this difference you get greater than four for sure before he calls his first time out. Oh, that one pinballed around. It's going to be an ace for Trent Rosenthal. Oh, you called it. It must be a McLaughlin McLaughlin thing. <laughs> Timeout Gauchos. Tunde head-to-head stat line, and we're looking at the two top hitters in this match. Bianchi, 15 kills, hitting 212, an ace, four digs. Chaz Galloway, 10 kills, 389, two blocks, and two digs. This is a good version of Chaz, a version that could uh, help carry Hawaii a long way come postseason time. And a great serve again by Rosenthal, back to back, aces. Tell what I liked about that one, you know, it was after the timeout. It was after he cooled off. It was crucial that he kept it in to keep that lead going. And sure enough, he not only kept it in, he got an ace. And now, the largest lead for Hawaii at five. Santa Barbara with only one timeout left. And that one goes long. Thoughts on the way Hawaii has played overall here this evening? Well, I've been impressed. They've won two close games. Those first two sets were really close. And they came through and played like veterans. Uh, and, and it was really impressive to watch. And Santa Barbara really is playing. They played well enough to win the first two sets. It could be 2-0 the other way very easily. The quality of play in general has been really solid tonight on both sides. Rosenthal going to Voss off the block and out. Well, they, with the exception of maybe one attempted set in Voss's direction, Rosenthal and G. Voss have been vibing this evening. Yeah, I, I think right now, Rosenthal, the <laughs> ball beautiful. Uh, I think Rosenthal's now going to feed Voss up front. He's got the small no blocker he's going against. Kane dug up by Choi. One hand set outside. It's Galloway. The great up there by Wallace. Here's Bianchi off the block and down. Believe it or not, an imperfect block by G. Boss that time. He did not get his hands over the net and penetrate like he normally does. So here's Owen Longcar serving. 16 serving 20. And it's an ace indecision between Choi and Galloway. And the Gauchos within three here. Ace number five on the night for the Gauchos. Crowd trying to urge the home team on. Back to back style ace. <laughs> Walker, who hasn't even played this year. And it's a two-point differential timeout, Charlie Wade. And well, you called it C-Mac. This is a gaucho squad. Even the corner crew was discussing it between sets two and three. That just doesn't go away easily. Yeah, they're gritty. They you know they just battle hard in every single point. They never stop till the last ball drops. They're well coached. And I think they're, they're playing without two of their four prize recruits. This really recruiting class was number two in the country, and two of them aren't playing tonight. All right, let's check in with Ryan. Hey, thanks, Gunnar. Well, a lot of energy still happening here on the Gaucho sideline despite being down, and one of the team leaders who's really been encouraging his team during the timeouts 
has been Jock Walmer, the setter for the Gauchos, is really getting into the faces of his players and his hitters, saying, hey, keep swinging. He's really showing a lot of leadership, not only running this offense, but helping to keep his team in it by encouraging the middles as well as the outside hitters to not be afraid of the Hawaii block and keep swinging. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. We mentioned UCSB, a little banged up here and got even more banged up with Josh Aruya appearing to roll his ankle earlier in the match. Hawaii leading the all-time series with UCSB 60 to 37. They have played a ton over the course of history. Hawaii also holding a 16-match winning streak in that series, dating back to 2017. So it's been a minute since the Gauchos have gotten one off of Hawaii. And obviously with Hawaii also not in full strength these days, uh, it seems as though the opportunity is presenting itself for some of the other members of the Big West to get Hawaii while they can. And we gotta give a shout out to Owen Lunkar, the sub who's gone in, who's an outside hitter, middle blocker who's gotten a couple bases here and really played well. Galloway, oh, he rose up above everybody and got the touch. They called a point to Hawaii. The R1 was calling touch. Yeah, Ray Mink called a touch, gave the point to Hawaii. Dixon Chun down on the floor was giving the point to UCSB. Line judge had an out call, no touch. And now there's confusion everywhere. Whose point is it? <laughs> and so the official call is a touch. And it's going to be challenged by Rick McLaughlin. No touch. Well, that was confusing. That was wild. At least three different officials calling three different things. No touch. No touch there. I think it's the back row touch. Right there. Yeah. That's the one that I think Ray Mank was talking about. I think it hits the shoulder of Longcar right there. No, no it doesn't no. touch him. And it doesn't touch Collins either. I think this call is going to get reversed. Yeah, it didn't look like there was a touch on the back end, so really it comes down to whether or not there was a touch at the net. And again, what made it more disorienting was the fact that you had multiple calls from various angles, and maybe not the most demonstrative yeah. touch and point call to Hawaii by the R1 Remy. Correct. I think it will get reversed. I think it's going to be UCSB ball. Gauchos coming off of a season where they won just eight matches, lost to Hawaii in the Big West Conference Tournament semis a season ago. And then they also said goodbye to what was a pretty massive senior class. Not everybody had finished up their eligibility, but uh, obviously, in the sport of men's collegiate volleyball, you got four and a half scholarships. Uh, staying for an extra year uh, is not always as easy as it may be in other sports. And so, among those that they lost, you had middle blocker Donovan Todorov, you had Nick Amoruso, uh, the pin hitter, and then, of course, Ryan Wilcox, Punahou alum, uh, who Rick McLaughlin says uh, may have had uh, as strong an impact on this program as anyone he's coached. Ooh, that's saying a lot. That is saying a lot. And I think, for those who want to know, I think uh, Ryan Wilcox is now doing a lot of beach work, beach activity, playing uh, on the AVP Tour. And uh, we grew up on the beach, so it's natural for him to return to the beach. All right, looks like Dixon Chun may have come to a conclusion here. <laughs> I think the ball's been saying out. It's out. So Rick McLaughlin's had a pretty good night with the challenge card. And they have all three of their challenges remaining. They have scored four in a row, and it is 19 serving 20. And perhaps the break in the action contributing to Longcar sending it out. Now comes the tough part of the 
of any match, when you get the 20 points, how do you play between 20 and 25? Each team will be challenged big time in the next 10 minutes. And so Kevin calling. In and back to serve, Hawaii up two. Gets it in, pass by Collins is a good one. Middle set goes out off the palm of Meister. And Hawaii at three. Oh, we got a good pass that time from Collins, almost perfect. Ran a nice play, had one on one up front. Couldn't convert. Another good serve by Calling. Outside, that is Kane, rattled around, and Galloway couldn't rise quite high enough to even, give himself a chance to send even it Chaz over. Chaz Galloway couldn't yeah. jump that high. Good serving turn by Kevin Calling to to give the Rainbow Warriors a little bit of breathing room. Now Jack Walmer to serve. Uh, we'll see if it goes right at Galloway again. Goes to Sakonoko, who puts it on the money. Neuster couldn't get it down, though. Wallace with the set. It's a little tight. It drifts over the net. Galloway off the bump set from Todd. Sends it long. Hawaii just not getting it down in out of system moments here at this late stage of set three. These are the tough points to play. Walmer went to Sakonoko last time. Let's see if he goes back to Chaz or not. It's Choi this time. Backside, Todd blocked and it goes out. All the cutting Todd. It's been a little quiet here the last set and a half, but he now has six kills and Hawaii up two. It's been a minute since he's gotten a set. To have him get involved here in these final few points, I think is crucial. So 23 serving 21. The toss by Todd. Here's Kane. Oh, he ripped it off the block and out. Just making confident swing after confident swing, Patrick Kane. Now he's going back to serve. He's got a couple of aces tonight. He's got, sorry, he's got one ace tonight. Three errors. He closes his eyes, visualize where this ball is going to go. Crowd trying to bother him. It's a great serve, a great pass, Sakonoko, and over on two goes Tread. That's twice tonight he's pulled that off. So difficult to scout, so difficult to read. Well, what a pass from Sakonoko. Give him all the credit. And they rise here at Simplify Arena at Stam Sheriff Center. Aloha ball for the match. Walmer. Goes to Bianchi, dug up by Galloway. Rosenthal outside, Louis. It'll be played back. Wallace with the set, Bianchi from off the net. The save there by Todd. Galloway going out to Sakonoko, punches it deep. Advantage now, Gauchos. Bianchi again. Oh, that was thunderous. <laughs> what a set from Jack Walmer. Oh, he, just a great touch. Right where Bianchi likes it, only one blocker off. Pulled Kurt Neustra a little bit there. So, a serving sub here for Santa Barbara. It's Dominic Lang. Well, he's going to be tough coming in cold. It's still a Aloha ball, but he serves up an ace. And we are tied at 24. I thought that ball was going out. Charlie Wade going to signal for a timeout. Oh, these gritty gauchos. How tough was that for Dominic Lang to come in, hadn't, hadn't played all night long, comes in cold and serves up an ace. In Los Angeles, California, and it was a deep serve. Like you said, may have been an out ball, but he forced that Hawaii serve receive into a tough decision here. Yeah, that one is tough. I thought for sure, chest high like that, and you're five feet from the back line, pretty good chance it's going to go out. The 
Well, these are tough points to earn here going down the stretch. Hawaii out hitting, out blocking, out digging UCSB here in the third, and yet we're tied at 24. It's been a little messy yeah. for the Rainbow Warriors down the stretch here in the third. They've had some great passes off tough serves. Then they have had some shaky passes or shaky decisions off so-so serves. Rick McLaughlin always so stoic on the sideline. Appears to just be very meticulously observing how things are playing out. Yeah, being very judicious with some of his decision making. He's a real student of the game. He's got a great assistant in Blaine Nielsen. The two of them do a great job there. So out of the timeout, Lang again to serve. We're tied at 24, and he serves it into the net. And so they will stand again. Aloha ball again for the match. Kurt Neuster to serve. Here it comes. It's Bianchi, the tip shot right there is Rosenthal, so Galloway has to take on the set. Tului blocked back the cover there by Todd. Rosenthal going back to Sakonoko off of one leg, off the blocking down. It wasn't exactly how you drew it up, but Louis made it work, and Hawaii makes it happen by way of a sweep. A kahi, a lua, aloha, to improve to two and three in the Big West Conference. What a finish. How about that last play when Ted Rosenthal makes the dig. He's looking for Elena Choi to set the ball, but Troy wasn't around, so Galloway had to step in at the last second and make the set. Uh, and Hawaii was, I think, very fortunate to get that last point. Hawaii hits 398 for the match compared to 250 for UC Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara, the team that is last in the conference in aces, actually out aced Hawaii seven to three, but you had a pretty all around effort when it came to the set distribution. A lot of contributors led by Chaz Galloway's 10, G Boss, Louis Sakonoko's nine, Alakai Todd six, Kurt Neuster with five, and how about four kills even for the setter, Trent Rosenthal? Yeah, I, I call that pretty good distribution. That might be the highlight of the game for Trent Rosenthal. That he got everybody involved and ended up in a W. That's all, all that really matters. From the Olympic sports, don't forget to bring the Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the match. It is Jess Bianchi. 17 kills, 231, four digs and an ace for UCSB. And Tred Rosenthal, 33 assists, four kills, a block, six digs, two aces. How'd you assess Rosenthal's performance here this evening, Steve? Improvement, a step forward, a more sophisticated offense, got the middles involved more. The middles were getting 23% of the sets after two sets. I think that's a good sign of their engagement and their keeping the other middles busy. Uh, well done by Tread tonight. Well, he gets our player of the game nod. Let's send it over to Scott. Started with the sweet shirt we got from Manohe Lee. Our, our mic is, oh, they, okay, now it's working. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask you again, Coach. All right. <laughs> you said last week you were a work in progress. Did you feel like you made some progress tonight. And I said, yeah, I think we did. I think it started with these sweet shirts from Manohe Ali'i. We're looking good and feeling better. But seriously, uh, you know, we were, we'd gone from 7.4 errors a set to a little over 11. First set tonight, we're at nine. You know, now we're knocking on the door to get back to where we were. I didn't look and see where we ended, but you know, and the, after two sets, we had three uh, blocking errors, which you never see that much of. So I think there was some progress, you know, a little bit better from the service line. A little bit better out of system area four. That's some of the stuff we've been working on. So 
nice to see that uh, come to fruition tonight in the match. What did you think about Tread tonight and his distribution decisions? Well, you know, I, I'm probably his bit, biggest critic, but uh, he is a talent. I mean, I love having the guy on the net. We're like, keep it up there. His ability to score, he just impacts the game in so many ways now. He served really well tonight. He touches a lot of ball up there. He scores for us. You know, in the setting stuff, he, he's learning how to kind of play the chess game mm -hmm. and, uh, and how they're defending us. So um, I'm just happy he's here, really. All right, Coach, congratulations. We'll see you tomorrow night. All right, thanks. Good off. Thanks a lot, Scott. Good to see that smile. A little bit of that uh, <laughs> chipper disposition there from Charlie Wade. Of course, uh, winning always makes things feel better in Hawaii now. 19-4, and 2-3 and three in the Big West. Gauchos fall to 7-15. and 15. They're 0-6 in league. C-Mac, I'll give you the last thought before we kick it to the postgame. I think tomorrow night is going to be even closer. It's going to be an amazing event tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. For anybody who wants to show up for senior night, they're going to see some great volleyball and you'll see some great tributes to the seniors that are leaving this program. Uh, 6,700 tonight. I think it's going to go pushing full, full capacity yeah. tomorrow night. And that's the expectation for sure. Senior night tomorrow night. Don't forget about the post-game show. Uh, they will break down how it went down for the Rainbow Warriors here uh, this evening. But for now, for CMAC, Chris McLaughlin, I'm Canola Lay here for the rest of our Spectrum Sports crew. We bid you aloha from Mano. Night number one, UH UCSB. We start off with the Gauchos, very talented Jess Bianchi. He led all hitters with 17 kills on the night on 39 swings on the Hawaii side. Louis Sakamoto trying to fill the void of Spiros Hawkins. And uh, Louis had a pretty good night. Nine kills in 273. He also contributed three blocks at the net. And Chaz Galloway. He has stepped up his game big time the last couple of weeks. Chaz led Hawaii with 10 kills. He also had a couple of blocks as well and did a nice job passing. And then Hawaii's defense, Hawaii. Nice dig right there by Ileo Choi. Choi, six digs on the night. Did a nice job of covering as well. And Trent Rosenthal, the freshman setter, did a really outstanding job of distributing the ball ball tonight. Hawaii as a team hit 398. Rosenthal with four kills and 33 assists as Hawaii takes it in three over the Gauchos. From Spectrum Sports, it's the Hawaii Honda Dealers post-game show. Now let's take a look at the final numbers brought to you by Steve's Plumbing. There you see Hawaii wins it in three, 25, 23, 21, and 24. Hawaii hitting 398 to 254. The Gauchos Hawaii with the advantage in the blocks, in the digs. Service game though, you have to give the, the advantage to the Gauchos. They aced Hawaii seven times to Hawaii's three service aces. Bottom line, Hawaii got a much needed W here in conference play. Scott, James, and Ryan, and uh, your guys' over th overall thoughts on how Hawaii performed tonight. Well, you know, I think Hawaii did what they needed to do. They looked um, they looked a lot better this week. I think it shows what a week of practice can do. Again, them getting adjusted. One of the things that we also didn't see is a lot of changes with the lineup. Hawaii pretty much stayed with the same six players throughout the entire match. We saw uh, Louis as well as Chad stay and locked in in that outside in position and I honestly think that helps we talked about in the pregame show about how Hawaii needs to solidify some of these players and get them comfortable next to each other and I think the more that they have uh, opportunities to practice and play together and be challenged the better this team will be and we saw that tonight yeah it's evident that Louis spent a good amount of time at practice with those starting uh, with the starting positions he was a lot more in sync the passing was a lot more er, in sync as well they passed a little bit more cohesively. Even though they got ace seven times, the seams weren't the issue. It was getting ace pretty hard straight at them. Um, and Luis Akinova had himself a night. I think he's getting a little bit more comfortable with this lineup. He's showing off a couple of really good sets like that last one. And he's just playing like I think all of us know Louis is capable of playing. You know, we had Chaz on in the corner a couple of weeks ago or last week, whenever it was. And, and he admitted that 
you know, he understands he's got to take on more of an offensive role without Spiros being in the lineup. He had Tank kills tonight, and you have seen him do that the last handful of matches. Yeah, Chad Galloway, I think he's been a little bit in the shadows when Spiros is playing, because Spiros is such an incredible player, but we know that he's capable of hitting a really high percentage. We've seen him do it for a couple of years now, and I think he's letting it shine a little bit more. He's taking more of that leadership role because Spiros took a lot of the heavy hitting. Now someone has to fill it in. It's a lot more spotlight on him, something that we're just not used to seeing, but he did an incredible job tonight. And the thing is, Chaz is going up sometimes against three blockers. Mm -hmm. I think half the time they go to him, it's out of system. So it's not like he's getting these one-on-one -on -one opportunities. He's going up against three blockers at times and still finding ways to get kills, including that set winner in game number one where, uh, where Chaz got that, that set winning kill. Uh, but we're seeing a lot more offense from him. What about Trent Rosenthal? Not just his setting, but I think he was a little bit more offensive tonight than we've seen. He was four for four, had, had four kills. Do you think he feels like maybe he needs to add a little bit to the offense to kind of break things up? I mean, I think it only helps Hawaii. I don't know that he's normally used to being that offensive, but the, we were slowly beginning to see uh, just what type of offense he can provide. Overall, Hawaii hits 398, so he set a very good match. But as you're saying, Scott, I think he is looking for ways to be more involved in the offense. Again, this coming from uh, a year after Yakum Tella, who we were so used to being uh, seeing go up and hit it over on two. Tread kind of has that two-hand dump, which is now becoming a coin. We have to think of a name for that. Tune in tomorrow. We'll, we'll think of something clever. Uh, we'll leave that up to you. Yeah, You're good at the those things. <laughs> yeah, and the other beautiful thing with that, it just opens up the offense for the hitters. We see a lot more solo blocks going up on the pins, a lot more solos. And if not, no blocks up against Gary May Voss and Kurt Nurser. It just keeps the opponent's blockers on their toes. A little bit unsure of what's going to happen. We saw Jakub Teller last year got Dimmy up with no block a lot of times. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to start seeing that a little bit more from Chad Rosenthal. In Game On, presented by Bank of Hawaii, our pregame show, we had you guys pick your peak performers. You went with Alakai Todd. He had six kills, hit three tall, but it was kind of a quiet night for him. Yeah, you know, I think Alakai did what he had to do, uh, but I do think that you know, he's going to be so critical to Hawaii's success down the line. Uh, he did uh, not maybe not have, you know, those double-digit kills that we're used to seeing, but he had seven digs in the right-back position, and that is the thing that I think most is uh, is most surprising about Alakai Todd. For his stature at 6'9", uh, the kid can play defense, and I don't know if he's a kid. I mean, he's six years in, so but I look how he can play defense, and uh, <laughs> seven digs tonight really shows that. And you had Luis Sakanoko. Your, your evaluation of his performance. Luis is getting better by the game. I'm, the beautiful thing that I like about him is he limits his errors offensively. He only had three errors, only nine kills on 22 attempts, but he's playing a smart game. He knows when he can go 100%. He knows when to recycle the ball, and he just plays very smart. I think he's holding himself very well on that serve-receive game as well. He got aced one or two times, but he's doing a good job. If it's not an ace, it's fairly in system a lot of the times. And he just brings a different energy. I think he's all about this team. He plays really scrappy defense. He's falling all over the floor, getting some really good digs. And he just brings that spark that I think this team needed. One well, thing we've noticed since Hawaii's gotten into conference plays, their blocking numbers have elevated a bit. Tonight, six and a half blocks. Your overall uh, opinion of their blocks tonight. Well, I think one of the things that helped Hawaii is uh, at times Santa Barbara was out of system. So it made it pretty obvious to know where they were going to go at times. Uh, the blockers just seemed a little bit more dialed in, especially the middle blockers. Uh, we've seen at times the middles uh, have gotten lost uh, a few times here. but. This match, they look really dialed in, uh, as including especially Jeremy Boss, who again ends the night with nine kills, hitting 727. Yeah, That's I was insane. just going to say that. It's almost at a point now where if you look and he hits under 600, you're right. like, hey, he was pretty average by his standard. I mean, it's unbelievable. I, I don't know if people realize how good he has been this year. Yeah, Jeremy's really stepped it up. And I think a lot of that is that communication that he's been having with Tread. We've heard it over and over again about how they watch film, they study film, they go into the uh, they go into the practice gym, get extra reps just to find that rhythm, and I think that rhythm solidifying. But again, from Guillerme's standpoint, you look at his resume. He's played with the U21 Brazilian national team. He's played in Brazil growing up. Another big world-class volleyball country. He just has it in him. I think we're a little bit spoiled to have him, and we it goes over our heads a lot of times, but. He's something special. This team would be a lot different without Jeremy Boss on it. Oh, no question. We kind of touched on it. Hawaii got a seven times tonight. Can you kind of talk about 
that part of the game for Hoya, the serve receive. Yeah, I mean, I think that that was probably the most shocking. And at times, like, during this match, I was thinking about that GCU match and when Hawaii just served GCU off the court. Uh, and now we're seeing Hawaii a little bit more vulnerable in the serve reception. And when you think about it, it's just one player that they're missing, right? You have, you still have Ileu, you still have Chaz out there, but there seems to be uh, just some issues with the way in which they're moving. I'm not sure if it is, you know, just, um, them not being confident next to each other, but I think that that will be one of the areas that we're just not used to seeing Hawaii give up that much service aces uh, on them, and, and serve reception errors, I should say, and uh, we'll see how they improve and the adjustments that they make. Yeah, I think Ch Chaz touched up on it very well last weekend where he talked about he was so used to knowing that Spiros will take this ball, I can get out to hit. Now there's a little bit more of hesitation or there where you're so used to over the past three years, okay, I'm good, I can go out and break. Those balls are dropping. It's going to take some time for them to figure out where everyone's strength and weaknesses lie, especially for Louis. Is he better passing on the right seam? Is he better passing on the left seam? In that row where the outsides are next to each other, is it better that Chaz just takes a little bit more court? That's one thing that's just going to take time. And again, when you're playing in the game, you don't want to overthink about things. But as they keep playing together, it's just going to become a little bit more effortless. Hawaii won in three tonight, but it wasn't an easy match. You look at the first set and the last set, it really could have gone either way. It could, and I mean, hats off to Santa Barbara. Like I said at the beginning, they're a scrappy team. They're not ever going to go out without a fight, and that's exactly what they did. They played very gritty. They got a lot of really good digs. They got the ball back over. Plays that people thought might have been over, they got under. They were covering really, really well. Um, and I, Jack Walmer, I mean, he's a very deceptive setter. Mm -hmm. You don't ever really know where he's going to go. He had a couple of miscues. I think you take a couple of those miscues away, it could have gone a different um this game could have been a lot different, but Santa Barbara played a good match tonight. Yeah, and it could be a lot closer uh, tomorrow night with yeah. both of these teams coming back at it. Uh, I think that there's always going to be a lot more emotion here. Hopefully, people will come out because uh, I think, you know, it'll be a really nice and significant moment when the crowd gets to thank Spiros Hakas, who will be here uh, in the arena tomorrow night, and it should be a pretty emotional night, which could help carry Hawaii. There are going to be a lot of guys saying goodbye tomorrow night. Yeah. Like six seniors, I mean, a ton of guys, but they still have more volleyball to play tomorrow night, and then on the road, and then the Big West Conference Tournament. We'll take a break. Hawaii wins in three. <laughs> Welcome back to the Hawaii Honda Dealers post-game show. Hawaii wins it in three this evening over UC Santa Barbara in part to that kill by Guillermo Voss, who had nine kills on the night, hit a 727 hitting percentage, and he joins us here in the corner. And first off, congratulations. And this will be the last time we'll be able to have you in the corner, so that's why we wanted to get you on here uh, for many other reasons. But... You lost Spiros a couple of weeks ago, and you guys have caught, kept on saying it's a work in progress, work in progress. Do you think tonight you guys took another step in the right direction? Yeah, thank you for having me here. I absolutely think that today we played a lot cleaner volleyball than we have been for the past few weekends. But that being said, there's still some stuff that we need to clean up and do better. One of the things that, of course, comes with this is it's senior weekend. Uh, there's a lot going on. Uh, you guys are printing shirts out. You guys are uh, spending time with family. Uh, how have you been able to navigate this kind of crazy week? Because we know you also said you have family in town as well. Yeah, th this weekend more than any others, it's been a lot more of whatever free time I have, I'm trying to spend with them since we don't get that much. So I haven't had a lot of me time recently, but it's still good because the time I get to spend with them makes up for it. You've been at Hawaii for one of the greatest parts of program history. Talk to us a little bit about what this has meant to you and being such a part of the most historic teams that this program has ever had. Um, and it slowly coming to an end, obviously a lot more to do, but just talk to us about that whole process. Yeah, I mean, it's an honor for us to have been part of all that we have accomplished so far. But as cheesy as it is to say it, I really hope that the future teams prove us wrong and just get four in a row, get five in a row, become the new UCLA who will just win everything. I hope that that's what the future holds for you. What, what are your goals now after, let's say after you're done here in college, what are your future goals? Play professionally, I would imagine? And, and have you already started making contact or have you heard from other teams? Yeah, I'll try and look to play professionally after I'm done with the NCAA. Because of rules, I'm not allowed to 
actually reach out or look into that yet. But yeah. as soon as I'm done, then I'll start looking at playing pro. You know, when you look back uh, at your time, what stands out in your mind uh, beyond just the national championships because that's pretty obvious that that's memorable but what are some of the things that you'll take away because you've had some pretty gnarly experiences i remember just covid and like you having to <laughs> navigate your way back to hawaii spending time i think in in london or england was it for some time and i mean you've had some quite a lot of experiences uh, over your your years here but what will you remember the most yeah at this point i've had a whole life here really is how i would phrase it uh, I just, the people here is just what I would remember the most. It's the friendliness of the auntie that runs into you at the local store or the brothers that I go to the beach with after a practice. It's just those day-to-day -day interactions. You've played in one of the biggest countries in the world for volleyball. Is this the best arena to play in? This is for sure the most welcoming arena that you can play in. You walk in here, it, you might be the away team, the home team, the guy that's first year on the team, everyone treats you with Aloha, all 10,000 fans in here, so it's really wonderful. Well, Gilly Army, we've enjoyed watching the last four or five years, however long it has been. We wish you nothing but success. Obviously, though, there's still a lot of volleyball left to be played. You got it tomorrow night, you got the two road trips, you got the Big West, and then hopefully the NCAA. Is that kind of how you're approaching tomorrow night? Yeah, no, absolutely. At this point of the year, every win counts for us. So right now we're trying to accumulate as much as th of those as we can so that we can try to make it there in the end. I know your parents are here, but I'm sure you have folks watching you uh, this evening if you want to give a shout out in Portuguese and English or whatever you'd like for the final time. Yeah, absolutely. For all my uh, family, friends in Brazil that couldn't make it here, I know that you guys wish you could be. And I still uh, see you guys as being here. I see all the support that you guys give me. So thank you. Last thing, what kind of ice cream tonight? Mango. Mango sorbet Mango. always. Okay, all right. It works so far, right? Might as well stick with it. Guillermo Voss joining us here in the corner. He and the Rainbow Warriors pick up a W tonight, winning it in three. We'll come back and have more from the corner. 11 years ago, I never thought I'd be facing stage four cancer. 